Hi guys, welcome to Manzi Tutorials. Um, in the last video, we started learning about loss of exponents and we went over all the eight loss of exponents that are available for us to use. And as I told you in this video, we'll be practicing, we'll be doing some practice problems. And for doing this practice problems, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use Kuta software. So Kuta software is a very well used software by all the math teachers. And this is like, you can search for a lot of problems based on Kuta software. And uh, the concept that I'm teaching right now comes under infinite algebra one. And over here we have around 20 to 25 problems or 28 problems. And I'm not going to cover all of these problems around 30 problems, but in this video, we are going to only focus on the first 14 problems. Okay, and as I told you, this is one of the very well used uh, softwares. I will just put the link in the description for the complete set of questions. And they also give you at the end, you do have answers to verify your work. They just have the answers. But in this video, I'll be going over each and every problem till uh, the first 15 problems, the first 14 problems, and the rest of the problems will be in our next video. Okay. Having said that, let us start our problems. So before we start our problems, I would like to review whatever we have learned in our last class. So we have learned in the last class, there were eight formulas or eight properties of exponents or eight laws of exponents. Let me list down all the laws of exponents and then we'll start our practice problems. So we'll be using most of the formula that I'm writing it right now. The first law is any number raised to the power of m. And if you have the same base raised to the power of n, it's going to be a power m plus n. So these are the two important formulas. Like you, what I want you to notice is if the base is same, and the powers are being different. You just have to add the powers. The same thing, instead of multiplication, if you have division, you're going to subtract the powers. You have a power m whole power n, you're going to multiply both of them. You have two different numbers or two different variables, but you have a power, all you have to do is distribute the power to both the constants or to both the variables. So it becomes a power m, b power m. The fifth one is quite similar, but instead of being multiplied over here, it's being divided. And in spite of being divided as well, you're going to distribute the powers. You're going to get something like this. The sixth one is any number raised to the power of zero is always one. Any number raised to the power of zero is always one. Seventh thing is a power. If you have a negative power, it's going to go and becomes positive when you move to the denominator. And it works the other way around as well. If you have, you pull it to the numerator and the negative power becomes positive. And the final one, nth root of a is nothing but a power 1 by n. So these type of numbers are called thirds and mostly they are irrational numbers. And they are also called as radicals. So now this formula we might not be using at this point of time, but when we are actually learning about radicals and when we are learning about different types of number systems like rational numbers, irrational, complex, real numbers, that's when we will be discussing about this eighth formula. So most probably we will be focusing on the first seven formulae. Okay. Now, 
As I told you, we are going to solve some problems from Kuta software. I'm going to separate this and I'm going to write my heading as practice problems so we can start practicing some of the problems and use these eight, these seven formula in our actual practice problems. So let me take the first question. The first question is two raised to the power two power two m raised to the power of two, that is two m square, is now being multiplied with two m cube. In this scenario, what you do is initially you will find out what are the constants. So what do you get when you multiply two times two? You simply get four. But you have m square is being multiplied with m cube. So let me rewrite that aside. m square is multiplied with m cube. So this is going to become 4. Because you know the first formula, all you have to do is you have to add the powers 2 plus 3. So that is going to become 4m power 5. This is your final answer. And the reason why I added this is, this is the formula that I'm using. a power m multiplied by a power n is equal to a power m plus n. When the base is equal and powers are different or you have two powers, all you have to do is add these two. So that's what I've been doing and I got the answer. The same way, let me go to the second problem. Second problem says m power 4 is multiplied with 2m power negative 3. And we know that when there is no number in front of a variable, that means it is being multiplied with 1. Now, what happens when you multiply 1 and 2? You simply get the answer 2. Still, you have something m power 4 is being multiplied with m power negative 3. This time, we don't have a positive number, but we do have a negative number. Irrespective of that, we are going to use the exact same formula over here and then get the answer as 2m power 4 plus if it was 3, I would have just simply written 3. But because it is negative 3, I'm going to write minus 3. What is plus of minus? We know that plus of minus is minus. So you're going to get 2m4 minus 3. It's going to give you 2m power 1. And any number raised to the power of 1 is the number itself. So that means you're going to get the answer 2m. You don't have to write the number 1 because m raised to the power of 1 is going to be m itself. So you see this, m power 4 multiplied with 2m power negative 3, you are going to actually get the answer 2m. Now, let us move on to the third problem. The third problem question is 4r power negative 3 is multiplied with 2r square. So here in this particular problem, we are going to, uh, we'll end up using two different formulas. So 4 and 2, we just have to multiply the constants first. What is 4 times 2? You know that it is 8. And what is remaining? r power negative 3 multiplied with r square. So the same first formula you're going to use 8 r power negative 3 plus 2 because bases are equal and all you have to do is add the powers. When you're adding negative 3 plus 2, you will be ending up getting 8 r power negative 1. But then remember your seventh formula. Your seventh formula says a power negative n is equal to 1 by a power n. I mean, you can definitely leave the answer to this, but I know that I can simplify it a little further because I know the formula number seven. a power negative n is equal to one by a power n. 
this is negative n and this is my a now considering this it's going to become 8 times 1 by r power minus 1 i have just used this formula over here and then my bad guys um, r power 1 because when i take the negative power to the denominator it becomes positive so it becomes 8 times 1 is 8 divided by r power 1 is nothing but r so you get 8 over r right so that's how you get you simplify this complex term into a simple term that let me go to the next problem I will be putting this notes in a Google Drive and I'll be sharing you guys the link as well so you guys can actually download my class notes from the link in the description. So the next problem is once we do at least six or seven problems it's going to be fairly simple I don't even have to write the formulas for you so you guys can actually remember this but this comes only with practice. Right, so I want you guys to uh, watching the video. I want you guys to actually practice this because these are the fundamentals. These are the basics for a lot of other mathematical concepts. Okay, so the next problem is four n power four multiplied with two n power minus three. It looks the same. Four times two is eight. N power four plus minus 3 I have to write and it becomes 8 n power 4 plus of minus is 4 minus 3 so that is 8 n power 1 and the answer is 8 n it looks similar to the previous problem it's just that uh, it didn't have negative 1 next you have 2 k power 4 times 4k remember this whenever you do not have any power that means it automatically has the power 1 so 2 times 4 you're going to get 8 you have k4 plus 1 many students have been teaching this for a long time and many students forget to add this ones initially but do not forget that because any number which does not have a power or any variable which does not have a power is by default it has the power 1 8 k power 5 would be your final answer let us do one more problem of the same sort oh. 2 x cube y power negative 3 now instead of having one variable you are starting to get two variables 2 x power negative 1 y power 3 right to solve these problems first you need to correspond what are the bases and you need to correspond two identical bases so constants are constants it can be any number you can just simply multiply next thing is you can correspond the base x to another base x in the same way base y to another base y so this is most important like you cannot club an x base with y base you have to always make sure that you are combining the x base with x base itself so now see the orange line 2 times 2 is 4 now i'm going to write x terms separately excuse i'm just rewriting the statement times x power negative 1 y power negative 3 times y power 3 or y cube now you have 4 as it is you have x cube and x power negative 1 since we know the first formula a power m times a power n is equal to a power m plus n we can simply write 3 plus of minus 1 same thing over here y minus 3 plus 3 now see what happens 4x 
3 plus of minus 1 is 3 minus 1. And y power negative 3 plus 3 is 0. Now, the final answer would be 4x square and any number raised to the power of 0 value is 1. When you are multiplying 1 to any number, you are going to get the number itself. So you have the final answer as 4x square. Looks complicated, looks a lot of steps initially. But in fact, I am just writing the formulas that I have been using over here. a power m times a power n is equal to a power m plus n. The same formula that I used, but instead of doing once in the previous problems, like how we did in the previous problems, here we are doing twice in the same problem. And we are also using another formula, any number raised to the power of 0 is 1. Right? Now let us move on to the next problem. Two y square multiplied by three x. Here, the common mistake is people think we can add these two, and they will find they will finally write six x y power three, right? But this problem is wrong if you write like that because first thing is x is a different base y is a different base you cannot club these two different components or these two different variables when they are not identical or when they are not same so that's when the answer becomes 3 times 2 is 6 x y square it remains the same only thing is you just have to multiply the constants you cannot multiply the variables because they are not same and let us go to the eighth problem let me go inside Okay, so this is an interesting problem, similar, 4, v cube is multiplied with u v square. square. So in this problem, you know that you do not have any constant over here, that means you have a constant 1. So 4 times 1 is going to be 4 and you do not have any u term. So the uh, u term on the first, so sorry, the u variable is not available on the first term. So you're going to just write u as it is. And v, you have 3 and you have 2. What is 3 plus 2? The answer is 5. So if this is your question, this is going to be your answer. But see this, I haven't touched u or 4 because there is no other thing that I can multiply either 4 with or u with. So that's the reason you just are going to consider v and v and you just have to add 3 plus 2 and finally you are going to get 5. Let us go to the ninth problem. 4a cube b square is multiplied with 3a power negative 4 b power negative 3. Interesting. Same thing. So first you will multiply all the constants and next you will go to the terms which are identical that is a and a and then you go for the last one that is b and b. Now I'm going to rewrite the statement in a way that we'll understand it much better. So orange goes with orange so that is 4 times 3 is 12. A cube is multiplied with a power negative 4 and same way b square is multiplied with b power negative 3 we are going to still use the first formula and then write 12 a power 3 plus minus 4 if it was 4 i would have just written 4 
but because it is a minus term, I'm going to write the minus term. Same thing with b. b square power minus sorry, b square b power two plus minus three. So it becomes twelve a power three plus of minus is minus four b two plus of minus is minus three. So obviously you're going to get twelve a power three minus four is negative one. B power two minus three is negative one, but you know that if you have a power negative n, you can pull it down and make it positive. The same formula I'm going to use for both of them separately, and then it's going to become twelve multiplied by one by a power one multiplied by one by b power one. Now. It's going to be twelve because twelve times one is twelve. Again, times one is twelve, and a power one can be written as a, and b power one can be written as b. So the final answer is twelve a b. Okay. So to, again, it looks complicated, but it is very similar to the previous problem that we did. Okay. Now let me go to the problem number ten. Same thing. X square y power negative four is multiplied with x cube y square. So you will have to rewrite the terms in a way that both x and y are together. And if you can actually fast uh, quickly calculate, you don't have to uh, write the first step as well. There are many students whom I know they initially wrote this uh, multiple steps, but by seeing the question only, you can actually tell the answer. So that comes again with practice, and I would encourage all those students who are watching this video to practice more problems. And two plus three is going to be five. Five power negative four plus two is going to be negative two, and you know that if you have a negative power in the denominator, you can push it uh, in the numerator. You can push it to the denominator and make it positive, and it be becomes x power five by y square. As your final answer. So this whole term is nothing but x power five by y square. How did I get x power five? I just added two plus three. How did I get two in the denominator? First, I added negative four plus two. I got negative two. But because it's a negative two in the numerator, we can push it down to the denominator and make the power from negative two to positive two. So that's what I did. Let us do the last three or four problems, and then we'll continue in the next video. Okay. So the next question is x square raised to the power of zero. You should know that any number. Raised to the power of zero is always one. Two x square whole power negative four. This is an interesting problem. So first thing that you need to remember is any number with a negative power. If you want to make it positive, you pull it down and make it positive. By pushing it to the denominator, because it has a negative four power, what I'm going to do is I want to make it positive, and it becomes one by two x square whole power four. The negative is gone because from the numerator we are pushing it to the denominator. Now you know that a b whole power m is equal to a power m multiplied by b power m. So consider this, and write this down. I mean, what you are going to do is how we how we distributed this m over a and over b. So we got a power m b power m. I am going to do the exact same thing with four over two 
and over x square but this is in the denominator so i have to do every single thing in the denominator i'm gonna write 2 power 4 x square power 4 so now 2 power 4 is nothing but 2 power 4 is nothing but 2 multiplied by 2 4 times and that's when you're going to get 16 so i'm going to write 1 over 16 and you also know that there is another formula that we discussed i think it's is a third formula a power m whole power n is equal to a power m times n considering this you have x square whole power 4 is nothing but x square multiplied by 4 or x power 2 multiplied by 4 that is going to give you x power 8 so this term i got it from here this is the exact same term right i got it from here now x square whole power 4 is nothing but x power 8 so that's the value i'm going to write over here x power 8 and this becomes your final answer so for a question like this two two x square whole power negative 4 is equal to 1 by 16 x power 8 so this is your answer for problem number 12 so let me let us go to problem 13 4 r raised to the power 0 whole power 4 okay again so what you have to do is you have to distribute this over this term and over this term so when I'm distributing it, it becomes 4 power 4, r raised to the power of 0, whole power 4. But you know that any number raised to the power of 0 is 1. So it becomes 4 power 4 times r power 0 is 1 raised to the power of 4. 1 raised to the power of 4 is nothing but 1 multiplied by 1 4 times. So you will obviously get one. So the final answer is four power four. You can leave it like this, or if you want to simplify, you can simplify and write it as 256. That's totally up to you. Okay, let us do the last problem for today. That's 14th. And it says four a cube whole square. The same thing. You take this two and distribute over here. And distribute it over here so when I'm doing distribution I have to be extremely careful that e whether I'm providing it to the whole term or just to one constant so in this case I have to provide it to the whole term and make sure that it is being distributed this way so you know that 4 square is nothing but 4 times 4 that is 16 and you have also known that a formula a power m whole power n is nothing but a power m times n. Considering this formula, I'm going to write a power 3 times 2. So that is going to be 16 a power 6. So I'll be posting this class notes um, as a link in the description and I will be also posting the CUTA softwares, all the problems that uh, I, I got all of these questions from CUTA software and uh, many teachers, many math teachers uses the same software or the same documents. So I want you guys to have a look at it and there are other problems which I'm going to solve later in the next video. But if you um, like this, please subscribe to our channel and it will be very helpful because we'll be posting more number of videos going further.